Decepticons, transform and rise up! Decepticons, transform and rise up! I thought he'd never ask! Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Comedian Cam, and today we're going to be re-ranking every Megatron design from worst to best. Now it's been two years since I did the last video, and now, in 2023, we've got over 100 designs of Megatron to rank. From TV shows, comics, video games, merchandise, and just so much more, it's insane. Will it direct us to sit, stay, and transform as well? <laughs> now the unique thing about Megatron's design history is that it's not consistent. We've got so many unique variations here that I think it's going to make this tier list a lot more interesting. Excellent! Now I want to make a small change to this series, so up to this point in each selected tier row, I haven't been placing them in any particular order, like they're all equally as bad or as good as each other. And I know that's how some people look at tier lists, like the first one in the row means it's the best. I've not been doing that, but now I am going to be doing that, but I'll do that at the end. So as we go along, I'll place the designs in the tier that I think they belong in, and then when I've finished, I'll rearrange only the first and second one. I hope that makes sense. Brilliant, my boron compressor! So, without further ado, let's dive straight into the tier names, and at number one, of course, had to be... Next up is this iconic quote from the 1986 movie. Uh, I would have waited an eternity for this. I would have waited an eternity for this. Now for the middle tier, let's pull up a quote from the War for Cybertron video game. Reroute all power to forward guns and thrusters. Full speed ahead. But sir, that's suicide. <laughs> Any further objections? Where I kind of like the design, but I know a lot of people don't. Now for the second lowest tier, we'll have a quote from Transformers Animated. Ultra Magnus, here? No, merely a cheap imitation. And now for the worst Megatron design, I put two quotes together. No! Such heroic nonsense. <laughs> Disgusting. Let's start off where it all began with Generation 1 Megatron. I, Megatron, declare this facility Decepticon Domain! We have this classic toy box art here, and I gotta say, I absolutely love this design and the original toy. Yes, I know it looks like Megatron took too many Viagra pills, but still, it's a classic toy. It's unique to the 80s. Nothing screams more of a big baddie than a giant pistol. The Santa Gods! Attack! What? Now I might be in the minority here, but I really do dig the barbed wire pattern on his chest. I would like to see more of it. Now let's talk about the G1 cartoon Megatron. I think they made some good changes compared to the toy box art. You know, there were just some things that didn't need to be there. It's a true revision, they managed to get rid of all the excessive detail. Now I know they got rid of a barbed wire pattern that a lot of fans do like, but I think the three marks on each side of a chest has become more of a staple to the Megatron design. Yes, he's still a buckethead, but at least it's ten times better than before. What do I miss most about my youth? My boyish good looks. Such a square jaw. What a handsome devil I was back then. Now before this final design was approved, we do have an early version which did make its way into some toy commercials and comic books. His head is a bit more generic looking and isn't really menacing. You know, he's got yellow eyes and I just don't think it really works as your big baddie. And I'm glad that they kept the head from the toy box art because that's one of the most menacing things about it is this bucket head. Now as for the toy box art, I would have waited an eternity to just get my hands on it. Uh, G1 Cartoon Megatron definitely belongs in all hail. Um, as for the early head design, it's merely a cheap imitation. Now G1 Megatron has had so many different toys over 40 years, but I want to pick two that stood out to me the most. And well, we have the original Masterpiece Megatron, which I think just goes to show how far we've come in engineering, because at the time that was the most accurate Megatron you could get to the original G1 cartoon. But if we look at the masterpieces that are being made today, just a huge difference in engineering and accuracy. Now I don't want to knock the original, both of these masterpieces have their charm. 
The bad god, look at those legs. They're just way too skinny and they look way too delicate. They look like they could break. I still like it, even though I know a lot of people prefer the new version, so... I don't know, any further objections? I wouldn't if I were you! Though regardless, at the time, it was a triumph. But what wasn't a triumph was his little mini counterpart. It's just a little mini gun. I picked him out because he looked dorky. Know what? You're even uglier from this angle! <laughs> oh, and we also have the absolute abomination that is Mega Ratchet. What is this abomination? And why have you brought it here? Yeah, this was... I, I'm still shocked to this day that this was an idea that they thought would be um, entertaining for young children. And that's not even the worst thing in the comics. Megatron once defeated Grimlock and put his head on his hand as a trophy. Dude thinks he's a gangster. <laughs> Hardly my nature. The Ratchet and Megatron abomination can also go in disgusting. And Megatron using Grimlock as a trophy? That's also disgusting. I would say merely cheap imitation because he's trying to be cool and he's not. So I'm going to put him there actually. Now let's talk about the beast that is the return of Convoy Megatron. He is absolutely loaded. He is packed. He is ready to go to war. This would inspire so many future Megatron designs. I absolutely love both the vehicle mode and also the robot mode. They just, it's an absolute arsenal. And you know, it is a little bit overloaded, but I can't get over how badass he looks. I would wait an eternity for it. Next up, we've got Generation 2 Megatron, which was a part of a G.I. Joe crossover, and he is now a tank instead of a gun. This was, of course, due to regulations at the time where he could no longer have a toy for a gun. So Megatron had to beef himself up a bit. And you know what? It's a good alternative. It worked out for the better. I would wait an eternity to get my hand on that original toy. Now, Beast Wars Shadow Glass had this design of Megatron in all purple. And yes, I do like this all purple design, but you know what? There's something really nostalgic and really eye-popping about that green and purple design. Regardless, I still like the purple, so any further objections? Also during Generation 2, we have a little GoBot Megatron. I imagine that this only exists to save the trademark. You did your duty, little man. Such heroic nonsense. Now, something else quite bizarre is an unreleased Generation 2 Megatron. Yeah, this is, uh, this is wild. We actually have a render of artwork as well from it. It's a stealth bomber, which, you know, kind of plays in his future a little bit, which is nice, but everything else is just... Wow, it's just way too loud. It's definitely not Megatron. Yeah, and we got Starscream right next to him in this image as well. Um, Starscream looks kind of alright, you know, but uh, as for this Megatron, he looks like a big bozo. Merely a cheap imitation. Next up, we've got Machine Wars Megatron, and I gotta give props to the artist DC Josh. I love his artwork, he's amazing, and he is able to make even the shittest toys look so badass and cool. This looks like Megatron in his sort of youth a little bit, and for that, I kinda like it, but unfortunately, the toy is just a bit boring, isn't it? It's not really anything exciting. I've gotta really give props to the artwork here that managed to make this boring toy look actually kinda cool. It's like a little mini origin story for Megatron in a way. You know, once he was a plane, he was a jet. But is he really Megatron? I'd say merely a cheap imitation. Sadly, the artwork couldn't save him. All right, now let's talk about Beast Wars Megatron, where he was once a crocodile. This was, of course, before the drastic story change where it reimagined the Maximals and Predacons being the descendants of the Autobots and Decepticons. So, yeah, this was supposed to be the original Generation 1 Megatron, and they evolved, and it's lame. It's really, really dumb. I don't like it. It looks like a henchman. Is this really Megatron? He's merely a cheap imitation. Now let's look at 2001 Megatron from Robots in Disguise. This dude has six different modes. Yeah, this guy is extreme. He is an absolute beast. And I once owned this toy as a little kid as well. You know, I don't really see it so much as Megatron. It's more, obviously, Beast Wars-like Megatron. But for the show, for what the continuity was in that own show, it's nice, it's cool, but, you know, it doesn't really have the robots in disguise element, does it? What curves, honey? You are really put together. Wanna go cruising? Playing hard to get, eh? Man, what a downer. I still like the design to an extent. I know a lot of people don't, so I don't know. Any further objections? I can't believe I trusted you, Skylight! You made me look like an idiot! It's terrible! People are laughing at me! 
Now let's talk about the Unicron Trilogy, and first up is Armada Megatron, the Megatron that I grew up with, so I do have an attachment to this design, because this Megatron was my childhood. Transform and combine! It's a great unique design that really does do something drastically different while still capturing the sort of character of Megatron. Like the toy had so many play features, I just played with that tank mode all the time. Like I love the colour palette, they took Generation 2 Megatron and just made it work with this design. Now yes, I know he's a little bit of a flathead. <laughs> so why don't you share your little joke with everyone? <laughs> I wasn't uh, laughing, sir. <laughs> Flathead. Boy, I can really dish it out. <laughs> you are a freak. And even today, 20 years on, we're still getting brand new figures of this Megatron. I own it, and I love it. It's absolutely amazing. What I don't consider amazing is the Combiner Wars mix between Generation 1 Megatron and Armada. This just didn't work. The toy was not really well received at all. This was merely a cheap imitation of the original. I don't really love his Cybertronian mode so much, even though it's like the first design that we actually see. It's just a bit boring in it. I really love creative Cybertronian modes, and this one isn't really that creative. What a weakling. Now as for the original Megatron and Tidal Wave, of course in the cartoon we saw Megatron with the purple Tidal Wave, but I really wanted to see the original colours of Tidal Wave on that Megatron in the show. Now we did get Tidal Wave in his original colours in the video game, but sadly he never combined with Megatron. Heck, we're getting a brand new Tidal Wave toy, so now I'll be able to have the best of both worlds. I loved it every time in the show when he powered up, Megatron was ready for action. <laughs> the power is mine! Now one thing I thought I would never see in my life is a female version of Armada Megatron. We have the third party toy, the Eris Armadon. Now I was at TFCon this year at the Toronto convention and I was lucky enough that a subscriber of the channel gave me this for free. Yes, I'm going to give you another shout out again Keegan because what you did was absolutely incredible and touching. I really wanted this and I just didn't think I'd ever get my hands on it. And then when I met Keegan, he was just telling me how much he really enjoys the channel, he enjoys the content, and he, he vanished. I was like, wait, where's Keegan gone? I was going to say goodbye to him before I went up to my hotel. And as I was heading towards the elevator, Keegan just shows up with a second copy of Armada Megatron. Honestly, I was so incredibly grateful. And uh, still to this day, it was uh, one of the most touching moments of my entire career, my entire time at being at that convention. And how can I not give a shout out? It's on my desk. She's just posing. She loves a good pose. I have to put this in all hail Megatron because come on, it's such a badass design that you didn't think would work in those proportions and it does. All right, now let's talk about Energon Megatron. Oh. Now I've had a change of heart over the years over this design. While I still think it's basically Galvatron, it's still not that bad of a design. You changed your mind, sir? Why are you letting him go? Because he was getting on my nerves. Granted, the colours at times for me are still a hit or miss. You know, sometimes I'll watch it in the show and I just think it looks ugly and then I'll look at it as a toy or artwork and I think it looks really good. And I think the Energon toy has a lot of playability to it. Like, you look at it and it's got a lot of great mechanics. And even today, in Legacy, he's getting a mini version of it, which... I guess it's sort of an insult in a way, I feel like he deserves an upscale at least. But regardless, there is still some love there for that Energon Megatron. I guess it's just the animation in the show that really does this design dirty. Like when the show briefly dipped in cell animation, it made this design look absolutely amazing. But in 3D animation, I don't know, it just really makes him look ugly. How dare you? Oh, please. But when you see it in the toys and the Dreamwave comics, it really doesn't look all that bad. I know, I feel like some of you are going to come at me in the comments, so any further objections? Alright, now we have Cybertron Megatron, or as I like to call him, Goth Megatron. It's like a midlife crisis, he's trying his best to be really, really cool. Now he is a triple changer, but it's basically just a jet car. But it's an extreme Tim Burton Batman style. And he's got incredible horns. I mean, they're not as big as, um, obviously, Armada Megatron. But still, the colour palette is insane. Like, it's loud and it's all over the place. I've always been conflicted with this design because, I don't know, just out of a Unicron trilogy, it's just not the best. <laughs> Such feeble blows are a mere annoyance to me. They are blocking us. What? But regardless, there is still this sort of like soft spot for it because 
playability wise and vehicle mode it looks absolutely badass and cool and i know a lot of people really dig this design so i don't really want to shit on it because i'm not i don't want to shit on it because i do think it is a good design i just wish the colors were different like the galvatron colors suit better for the megatron name so i don't know i guess it can go next to energon megatron any further objections now let's move on to an interesting design we have the trans tech megatron this was unreleased, we never actually got to see how this looks both in vehicle mode or in toy form, we only have early concept stages. The head is definitely a miss, does not resemble Megatron at all, but I do like everything else about it. I actually think it's got a lot of promise, but sadly we never saw it fully realised. It's like the blueprint for Armada Megatron. I would have waited an eternity just to get a better head. No, I can't do that. It's it's not complete, is it? I have to put it in any further objections because I might like it, but I know probably a lot of you don't. Next up, we've got Transformers Universe Megatron, and we've got two different color schemes. We've got Generation 1 and G2, and I think both go hand in hand with each other. I really like it. They're both really cool. I like the tank mode. The kind of vibes I'm getting is Megatron when he's young, like sort of in his prime. Yeah, I think these two go side by side with each other. I would wait an eternity for them. Now let's talk about Classics Megatron, and if this doesn't scream midlife crisis, then I don't know what does. This is like G1 Megatron, and he's just like, he has to keep up with the times, so he's trying his best to look like a Nerf gun. You know, actually the gun itself doesn't actually look that bad. I actually think it's really cool, and I like how it sort of becomes like a cape. You know, it actually is pretty interesting and unique of a design. Um, it's kind of giving me like, it's it's probably what Cybertron should have been, the Megatron Cybertron, except the gun part, you know, just get rid of the gun part, but I do like how it sort of transforms, it's actually kind of a unique, unique take on it. So yeah, I bet a lot of kids actually had a lot of fun playing with this. I would have waited an eternity for this, I think. Next up we have Transformers Cloud Megatron, and I gotta say, I actually really dig this redeco. You know, this was originally Bludgeon, and somehow it's able to work as Megatron. I think this is really cool, it's actually not a bad design at all. I would have waited an eternity for this. Now some of you might not know about this one, but we have the GTR Megatron, with his girl partner. Yeah, I, I don't understand that, but... His face design is the only thing unique about it. Everything is just with logos slapped all over the place. He's basically just a giant promotion. I dig the head. It's very youthful Megatron, but it's not really Megatron, is it? It's merely a cheap imitation. Now we have Alternative Megatron, drastically different from what we're used to. And you know what? I actually kind of dig this. I like the blue. I think it really blends in with the purple really well. And his vehicle mode, well, it's just a cute car. But the badass robot mode. I really love the samurai vibes going off here. I know some of you probably aren't going to like it, but I like it. So, any further objections? Now let's talk about one of my personal favourite Megatrons of all time, Transformers Animated. Let's start off with a Sabatronia mode. It takes the 2007 movie design and really just cleans it up and gives it more of a G1 kind of look. I imagine the studio told Derek J. White to sort of base it on the 2007 design just because they were releasing around the same time. I actually love the deluxe class, really good toy, I used to play with it all the time. It's a badass Cybertronian mode, and his first scene in the show was absolutely menacing. He's just standing there, menacingly! But his Earth mode is truly where it's at, such a great revision, a massive upgrade from his original Generation 1 counterpart. This guy is ready for action. I just love the resemblance to G1 while being something strikingly different, like him being a helicopter as well. I've always wanted Megatron to be more like a helicopter, and we're finally getting that in Earth Spark. So it's good that that harkened back to Transformers Animated because it's really an underrated design. It's such a badass, menacing design as well, especially with that voice by Corey Burton. Evolve before Megatron. Now that I am Lord of Cybertron, I return to Earth to exterminate organics once and for all. I'll put his Cybertronian mode in the second tier, and as for the Earth mode, it obviously belongs in All Hail Megatron. Now if Season 4 of Transformers Animated wasn't cancelled, Megatron was going to get a huge upgrade for Marauder Megatron, which takes inspiration from the Beast Machines Megatron, and also the return of Convoy Megatron. What? Now we were so close to getting a toy of it, we have prototype images from the official AllSpark Almanac book, 
They are colorized by Mooney Looney. And I gotta say, we were absolutely robbed. I would have loved to have seen this both in the show and in toy. I just hope that it somehow gets revived in the future. I just, wow, this is incredible. Now there are different variations of the Earth Mode Megatron design. We have the Shadow Blade, which is... It's quite temporary, I assure you. Basically like a Galvatron Megatron. It looks cool. I really tried my best to avoid this toy as a kid. I really wanted the original. But regardless, it's still got good artwork. Um, it's, it's alright. Any further objections? Now, Animated did have its own Shadow Glass universe, and this is Megatron. Pretty standard. It's the standard Megatron Shadow Glass colours. And while we're on the subject, we'll talk about that original Shadow Glass Megatron. It's basically the Energon mold, but with these, like, heroic colours. Which, you know, that's alright. It's slightly better than the actual Energon colours. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the Shadow Glass series, but I know a lot of fans do like it. So, I guess I'll just put these in the middle, because I know you'll object to it if I put them even lower. Now let's talk about the comics, and first up we have the War Within Megatron. Now I do like this design, it is very bulky, but I love how armoured up he is. I don't care so much for the tank mode, if that's even supposed to be a tank, it just looks really daft and pathetic. But the chest detail with that big sort of circle on his chest. It's a more traditional G1 Sabatronia mode, and you know what, it, it really does work. Another thing that really works is the Hearts of Steel Megatron. We've got two versions here, we've got one of him as a pistol, and then we've got one as a cannon. And I love the cannon way more than the pistol. I love how gigantic those wheels are on his shoulders. The cannon is just absolutely badass, it's so menacing. But as for the pistol Megatron, it's just harkening back to the original G1 gun. And you know what, if you like pistols, there you go. Now we've had various Megatron backstories, but the one that I really like the most is Megatron being an Energon miner. You know, him kind of rising up from the caste system that he was assigned to. And you know what, this is a pretty, pretty cool take. We've got a recent figure of it as well, based on the War for Cybertron trilogy Megatron. And the colours look really good. It really works for a sort of origin story of Megatron. It's Megatron with an axe, and he looks badass. Now let's talk about the Robots in Disguise Megatron, a more beefy version of the G1 Megatron. You know, he's got a lot of extra added parts around his shoulder pads area, and we've also got a lot of good chest details as well. Of course, very similar, but just tuned up for a modern comic. But now for something that's drastically different, it's the Transformers Generations Bomber Megatron. This is absolutely amazing. I'm glad that we got a Generations toy. You know, this is a unique take, you know, all black with the menace in purple. It's just a unique design, like it took that original G2 unused concept bomber design and actually made it work for Megatron. Now this is Megatron. I know fans usually associate this design with more of a Galvatron kind of vibe, but I think it works here. It's got a giant ass cannon. You know, I hope we get an updated figure of this design because it's just so cool. The line in details on the chest. Like, it's so Megatron and so different, and I think that's the best thing about the character, is that as long as it's got that unique Megatron spirit, it can work. And if you thought that was impressive, in the IDW comics, they made him into an absolute unit. Like, this is him taking on a god. And, but he looks like a god himself. You don't want to mess with this Megatron, for sure. For I am the rising darkness of which the prophecy speaks. Damn, they just really went all out. Now let's talk about Autobot Megatron. I really like this rendition of the G1 Megatron. You know, they really just modernized it a lot. And bringing back the barbed wire was a nice little touch as well. I think it works on this design. His tank mode is really well designed as well. We've got a good sketch of it here. I know he'd be against it now, but all hail Megatron. Alright, last one from the comics is Megatron as a human. Now, I don't know the context behind this. I don't know why Megatron would choose to be human. <laughs> not for the fashion sense, I can tell you that! <laughs> Gotta admit, not the worst humanoid transformer I've ever seen. I mean, this is just his avatar, and I gotta admit, yeah, I can imagine the comics Megatron looking like this. Alright, now let's talk about the Align continuity, and we'll talk about the first initial design from the Covenant of Primus. This is... okay. I like it. I'm not the biggest fan of the face. The face definitely needed a little bit more work. The gun is a little bit too thin for me, but I do like it. It's just very beastie looking. It's, you can see he's got like sort of bat wings or something like that. Like I don't want to be too harsh to it, but it's just not as good as the Optimus Prime from the Covenant of Primus. But I will say I do like the treads throughout the legs. That's pretty neat. I'll put it in the middle, considering I'm indifferent about it. 
Now let's talk about Transformers Prime Megatron. I really do love this design. I love those eyebrows. You can't go wrong with those giant eyebrows there. This is such a great revision from the 2007 Megatron. They took what Transformers Animated did and just tweaked it a little bit more. This Megatron had too much pride. He didn't want to have an Earth mode. He just wanted to keep true to his Cybertronian form. So this is how he looked throughout the entire show. I really like his jet mode, even though his head is like just popping out like that. In any room of the house. Jet robot! Jet robot! That head design is amazing. The shoulder pads so sharp. Like, I do like it, even though I know a lot of people really don't like it. But come on, this is all hell Megatron, obviously. <laughs> yes! <laughs> But I definitely won't all hail to any of these Megatrons. What? The Dark Energon one is just generic looking. It's fine, it's cool, but it's just generic. And then the Shark to Con Megatron is by far the weirdest one out of them all. Like, I don't know what the toy designers were thinking. Why was this necessary? Was there going to be a storyline where Megatron turns into a Shark to Con? The Shark to Con one can definitely go in disgusting. And as for the Dark Energon one, Look, it's fine, but it's it's not great. Sorry, Megatron, but you don't win this time. Okay, now let's talk about his upgrade in Predacons Rising, which they refuse to name Galvatron. I know it's Unicron, but this was Megatron in the end. I do like it. I know a lot of people don't. It's not the worst upgrade. I, I definitely do like the horns. You know, it's definitely more Unicron vibey. I, I just wish they would have renamed it as Galvatron. But of course, for the story, it didn't make any sense. Look, it really is not all that bad. I would have waited an eternity for this. And that is final. Next up, we have Robots in Disguise, the sequel to Transmus Prime. Now, he didn't actually appear in the show, unfortunately, but we do have concept art, and I do dig it. It's kind of plain in some areas. It's basically just more of a toned-down version of his original design from Transmus Prime. It really strips away all of the Unicron elements from Predacons Rising. I would have probably changed the colors just a little bit. More interestingly, right next to him, we have the Tiny Titans Megatron. This was just a small little sub toy line and they just created artwork. We had a bunch of G1 modernized artwork, but this was actually pretty unique because we all assumed this is how Megatron was going to look in the show. Very different compared to the concept art version. I do like the combination of colors, but the spirit doesn't really give me Megatron vibes. This feels more like, I don't know, one of Unicron's other disciples or something. It's fine, it's neat, but ugh, I don't know. I guess we'll never know what this design was really meant to be. I don't really know what to do with these guys, so I'm going to put them both in the middle tier. All right, now let's talk about the Creo Megatrons. We've got our generic Generation 1, which is fine. But then we've got a mix of Samurai, Ninja, Cowboy, Knight. So bizarre. These little guys are just weird looking. And they're so boring as well. <laughs> bah. Then they really are poorly designed. Well, the last Creo we've got is a less ridiculous one, I guess. Very much resembling Dark of the Moon Megatron. It's fine. It's If you like these kind of builder figures, you know, you're going to get a lot of fun out of this. I just think he needs a lot more muscle on him. So I'm going to put this in merely a cheap imitation. Now let's talk about video games. And first up is one of my personal favorite Megatron design of all time from the High Moon War for Cybertron video game. I was so excited and a little disappointed with the recent new figure in the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition line because it really does deserve a better toy. This design is impeccable. I love how the shoulders are so different from each other and the tank mode. I love how it feels in gameplay as well. Such an underrated design that I really want to see more of in the future or at least something similar like it. This is definitely Megatron in his prime. All hail Megatron. I am the Dominator. I am the Destroyer! I am Megatron! Next up is the sequel, for the Cybertron, where Megatron gets himself an upgrade, and I gotta say, I like the War for Cybertron better. Never improve upon perfection, Soundwave. Now don't get me wrong, I do like it, I think it's a unique design to Megatron, but when you just compare it to War for Cybertron, 
there's just no competition with me. And I've always been a bit hit or miss with how pointy his chest is in the middle there. And I guess they sort of taken inspiration from Transpress Prime because I can see the similarities there. The tank mode has a nice upgrade as well, but I kind of wish he transformed into a jet this time. We already had a tank in War of Saradron, and I was just hoping, gameplay-wise, something different. He's like a Dark Energon light bulb now, like there's just highlights all over the place, and I do dig it, but it's very extreme. Silence! Look, I still like it, I just won't put it in all hail. Sorry, Megatron. No! I will not be denied! Next up, we're talking about Earth Wars Megatron, but I'm also counting it as Combiner Wars Megatron, because it's basically the same. We saw this earlier with the Armada deco. I just don't like this, I just feel like it's not got any real meat to it, it's just weirdly proportioned. Doesn't strike me as menacing, so it's merely a cheap imitation. Now what is menacing is the Transformers Universe MMO Megatron. This was a cancelled game unfortunately, but the design slaps really hard. This Megatron is so badass looking. It's a shame that this game never reached its full potential. I hope that Legacy does like a toy of this design because I think it really works. I'd love to see all of the Universe MMO designs at least get made into some toys. It's a great revision of a Transformers Prime design, like I love that the cannon of the tank is on the back of him, like the way how that fits in, just the insane detail. It's basically just what if Transformers Prime Megatron had an Earth mode. Kinda makes you wish he wasn't so arrogant with all that pride that he had about not having an Earth mode, like he would have looked 10 times cooler with it. This is definitely all hail Megatron. Next up is Forge to Fight, and this is very similar to the comics, the Robots in Disguise one. It's a very modernised Generation 1 Megatron, and I think it works in gameplay. The animation looks really, really cool. Um, it's just basically an updated, modernised version of G1. But an even better modernised version of Generation 1 Megatron is from the Chinese game. Now, yes, you can only play this game in China, but I gotta say, the designs for this game slap really, really hard. They've done so many great amazing designs taking both inspiration from the movies and just unique designs of their own and this one is definitely one of them again like i said with a transmis universe mmo megatron we need toys out of these designs they're just so goddamn cool what's not goddamn cool is the battle masters megatron you disgust me another thing i find disgusting is the angry birds megatron you are awash in their repulsive scent Disgusting. All right, now we've got Fortnite Megatron. This is getting ridiculous. Look, I'm going to be honest, I know absolutely nothing about Fortnite. I've only played the game like once or twice, and my sister's worked hard to get almost every Transformers character in this game just for me, and you know what? It's it's fine. It serves its purpose. It's basically the Cyberverse slash Evergreen Megatron. It looks less humanoid than the Bornby one. This is the best one out of all of them, as far as I can tell. I might regret this, but I'm going to put this in the middle tier. Any further objections? Okay, never mind, let's move on. Next up is Transformers Devastation. Originally, I wasn't going to include it, but then I realized he actually transforms into a tank. So it's basically just G1, but a bit more bulkier, just a little bit, and he turns into a tank. Yeah, it's cool. It's probably what Megatron should have transformed into back in G1. And I would have waited an eternity for it. And another thing I would have waited an eternity for is the Transformers Reactivate Megatron. Now, this is very similar to the Bumblebee movie Megatron. Um, I was kind of hoping for something a little bit different when it came to this game. You know, it's like you're just seeing the same thing twice. I do like it, of course, and I can't wait to play as Megatron in the game. Hopefully, but we are able to play as Megatron in the game. Like, I do like the line in detail. The patterns is just so cool, and that tank mode as well. It's just so badass, and that cannon, that arm cannon looks really nice. Of course, things are, like, subject to change, so I don't know if this is actually the final design of Megatron in the game. But if you had to compare this with the B-Movie Megatron, I would choose the B-Movie Megatron. So this one gets the second lowest tier. Unbelievable! Okay, now we have Megatron as a rocker from the Knights of Unicron. Yep, this is just War for Sabatron Megatron with, um... Yeah, this is just awful. This is terrible. Yeah! Stop, Soundwave! Turn it off! I can still hear them pounding in my brain! 
All right, now let's talk about some obscure toys. And first up is Titan's Return. Now we have technically two versions because we have his toy, which had this whole headmaster gimmick. And then we have just how he looked in the show. And how he looks in the show is basically just G1. There's nothing significant or new here, but Titan's Return, slightly different. The only thing I like about it is the fact it's a triple changer. Like that's the only good thing about this, but the actual robot mode, it's just a Blitzwing copy, but at least it got the barbed wire on it. Next up is Titanium Cybertron Heroes Megatron. This is very much like Megatron being an Energon Miner again. It's just a small little statue. I mean, it's fine. It's got some nice detail on it, but yeah, we, we should have probably had a figure of this. Unfortunately, next up is Bot Shots Megatron. <laughs> Something a little bit better is the Q Megatron. Ah, good stuff. Not so much better is the Constructor Bots Megatron. Yeah, this was just sort of a phase in the Transformers that people don't really talk about. And, and it's strange because all of the Constructor Bots videos on YouTube have like millions of views. And I don't know, it's just not appealing to me. I do kind of dig the vehicle mode, however. I wish that more Transformers would adopt the buggy kind of mode. You know, we don't really see that a lot. I know there's a lot of people that like the Constructor Bots line, but I don't really see a lot of people talk about it anymore. So, I don't know. It's just fine. It's whatever. I imagine playability-wise, it's a lot of fun. Alright, let's do a quick fire round and get all of these maggots out of the way. We've got a Bouncy Ball Megatron, a QT1 Megatron, and... I don't even know what this thing is. Join the minutes, and then we have this abomination, the Fool's Paradise... League of Steel Megatron. You hit rock bottom. Quick, let's move on to something quick. We have Cyberverse Megatron, we have his main design, and then we have Megatron X, which is from a different timeline, and then his big upgrade that he got from the power of the All Spark. Now, I dig all of these designs, they're obviously based on the evergreen design, which I'll throw in as well. I would say my favorite one out of all of these is perhaps the massive upgrade he gets. It's just so over the top and extreme, but I like that it's a helicopter as well. He's got so many power-ups and abilities, and it's a shame it only appeared for one episode, but I do dig it. Megatron X is pretty alright, they do some small changes, this is just a timeline where Megatron basically won. I kinda wish there were some alternate body parts, just to make him stand out a little bit more from his main design. But his main design is good. I do like the art style, both 2D and 3D. I just don't think it belongs in all hail. You're either lying or you're malfunctioning, you imbecile! You have failed me for the last time. Fool! Alright, fine, I'll put him in all hail Megatron, along with his upgrade as well. But Megatron X, I wouldn't have waited an eternity for that. Alright, now let's talk about the War for Cybertron Trilogy Megatron. This is basically a modernized version of G1, except he transforms into a tank, and it's more apparent that he transforms into a tank now. This is definitely the War Megatron. I actually like his design more than Optimus Prime's, like I actually really did enjoy it in the show, even though those lips, man, those are mega lips, I tell you right now. So yeah, I do like it, but I don't think it's as great as people say it is. <laughs> Another thing that I don't think is all that great is the G.I. Joe retool they did of it. It's basically just the same toy, but with G.I. Joe parts, and it looks terrible. I just did nothing. No. Oh, for Spock's sake. That's merely a cheap imitation. What's not a cheap imitation is the MDLX Megatron. I really, really dig this modernized, more robust sort of version of Megatron. I want to own this. I have the Bumblebee MDLX, and I really want this one as well. Lately, we've had a lot of G1 Megatrons being revised and modernized in all sorts of different styles, and it's been kind of oversaturated a bit, but this one, I really do dig. It's unique enough to change parts while still being obviously familiar at the same time. Like the other Megatrons I've put in the second tier, they're just not as unique unique as this one. And what's definitely not unique are these two product placement Megatrons. Why throw away your life so recklessly? And the worst one of them all is the Nike Megatron. Yeah, whoever wanted Megatron as a shoe. <coughs> but if you thought that was bad, we've got the Bear Brick Megatron. That's not it. How humiliating. Ah. Alright, the last obscure one we have is Family Guy Megatron. Come on, I can't put him in the highest tier. Tell a Megatron. Do as I command! Okay, okay, jeez. Nope, sorry, it's merely a cheap imitation. Alright, now let's finally talk about Megatron from the live action films. I am Megatron. 
First up is the early head design of Megatron for the 2007 film. So yeah, Megatron's head had a massive revision because fans were just against it that much. And I can agree. One thing I said in my old Megatron tier list is that Megatron's design from 2007 feels alien and a lot of people was like well yeah he is an alien but i'm talking about alien from the movie alien like it doesn't resemble a transformer to me and <sighs> It doesn't resemble a Transformer to me, and this was a drastic, drastic change from what we were used to. Now that can go in disgusting, but as for the finalized 2007 design, I've kind of grown with this design over the years. I think the head just makes it look a lot better. Like, I really dig the Masterpiece toy. I really want to get my hands on it. But I can't deny that his future designs just got 10 times better. And like we've discussed, that this design has had major revisions in other continuities, like with Transformers Animated and then Transformers Prime. They just took that design and they just cleaned it up and made it look more like a Transformer. So I'm probably going to regret this. I know a lot of people like it, but I know a lot of people don't as well. So I'm going to put it in the middle. Any further objections? Oh, so unwise. <laughs> Now let's talk about Revenge of the Fallen Megatron. I absolutely love this new design. The upgrade, it's just what Megatron needed. You can tell he actually transforms as well. Even though it's not on Earth mode, yes, it's still alien. But still, it's a big improvement over 2007. And I don't know why. This is just when Megatron peaked for me. He's just like that combination of Cybertronian, yet still resembling somewhat of a transform at the same time. And that claw. I don't know why, but I just love that massive claw. I love playing as him in the Revenge of a Fallen game. And yeah, I, I just think this was the best live-action Megatron design uh, that we got in the Michael Bay era. Definitely belongs in All Hail Megatron. Megatron finally got an Earth mode in Dark of the Moon, but unfortunately it was a disgusting truck. He's trying to be Mad Max, and it's not working. Master, how it pains me to see you so wounded, so weak. Spare me, you gaseous sycophant. Even though he's, like, pathetic and ugly now, I actually do kind of dig this design. I love this broken Megatron. I don't think it's the best, but I like that it can actually transform now into an Earth mode, even if it is, you know, a disgusting Earth mode. While I do like the chains on the chest, I wish there was just something more to his chest design. Like, I don't know, he had, like, windows on his chest or something. You dare lecture me, slave? I do like him. I just like Revenge of the Fallen better, so I don't think I can put him in all hail. You are either lying or you're stupid. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Next up is The Last Night, and this is going to be a controversial opinion, but I really don't like this design all that much. Look, don't get me wrong, it is a solid design, but you can't really tell either what this is supposed to transform into. Originally, it was supposed to have transformed into a dragon until they changed it at last minute, and now he's this jet. But you look at that transformation, and it's just how? How is that possible? I do dig the head design. I just wish they kept the original head from the trilogy and just put that mask over that. Like, that looks actually pretty cool. And that mark on his face, it just kind of ruins the design a bit. But it's the only thing that really adds colour to it. Now I know that's Quintessa's mark and it would have disappeared. And even though the previous Megatron designs was kind of all just this greyish colour. But on this design, I really do like the metallic tint. It really just shines and pops out a lot more. While it's not my favourite and I think it's overhyped a lot, I do like it. It's different. It's unique. At the time, it was the closest thing we ever got to resemble in Generation 1. And heck, his head design's got a tattoo from his original 2007 design. I might have to put this in the second tier. No! I'll crush you with my bare hands! Oh, okay, fine. All hail Megatron. <laughs> Next up is the Prime 1 Studio Superior Megatron design by Josh Nizzy. Now, I imagine that Josh wanted Megatron to look like this in the live-action films, and honestly, I can agree with him. This is an absolute badass design. This is basically what fans, I imagine, would have wanted from 2007. He's so beefy and bulky and so menacing. And I like the, on his back as well, it's like a sort of cape. There's like these dreads on the back of him. I would be against that, but it actually works for this design. It makes him look way more terrifying. And I'll throw in some more officially licensed statues. We have the XM Studios and the other Prime 1 Studios Megatron. Both are great contenders to be in the live action films. I kind of like the XM Studios one a lot more. I kind of imagine that's how he would have actually looked if he was so G1 inspired. 
Like, I would have loved to have seen any one of these in the Bumblebee movie, but after a long wait, we finally know what Megatron would have looked like in the Bumblebee movie. Yep, they have just released a toy based on concept art. As with the Cybertron scene, we had all of our favourite Autobots and Decepticons resembling their G1 counterparts, and one thing fans were wondering was where was Megatron and what would he have looked like? In a deleted scene, we would have seen Megatron frozen at Sector 7 with this design. And Hasbro didn't want that design to go to waste, so they've now decided to make Studio Series toys based on unused concept art. I've pre-ordered it and it looks absolutely amazing. I love everything about this design. I love the chest, the torso, the cannon, the head design. The only thing I would slightly change is the face design around the eyes. I just wish that was toned down a bit. Sadly, it's been pointed out to me that he has a mustache like Waluigi. Thanks for that reception. An extra bonus as well is that he's a triple changer. I really like the tank mode. The jet mode is probably the least favoured one, but I still think it works. Of course, this goes in all hail Megatron. Alright, last one from the movies is the potential design of Megatron from Transformers 1. It's an upcoming animated film that should be coming out next year. Now, this is not the actual design. This is just something a fan drew from when they saw previews of it. And if this is how Megatron's going to look, yeah, he's, he's more of a buckethead. Of course, this is not final, so I'm not going to put this in any of the high tiers because it's not a final design. I'm going to put this in the middle. Any further objections to this? If it looks like this even? Alright, second to last is Earthspark Megatron. You always knew how to make an entrance, Megs. <laughs> and I really love this design. It harkens back to Transfers Animated. He's a helicopter, and I love that he actually uses his helicopter mode in action in some scenes of the show. <laughs> Yes, even though he's a good guy now, he's still terror in the skies, but honourable in the streets. Um, I just hate that ghost symbol. It looks absolutely disgusting, and with the end of Season 1, I wonder what his badge is going to look like now. Is he actually going to have an Autobot logo, or is he going to keep his Decepticon logo? It's a great revision. I've been wanting something similar to Transformers Animated, and yeah, I just can't wait for more Transformers Earth Spark Megatron. Definitely, all hail Megatron. And now finally, for our last Megatron design, we have a Bishoujo Megatron. What in the name of the Allspark? Yep, this is an officially licensed figure. Are you feeling confused right now? <laughs> She's everything I've always wanted! I mean, I think the tie she's wearing is pretty cool. You know, I'm gonna be safe and put this in the middle. Any further objections? She's not so hot! She's hot enough to replace you whenever I choose! And that's every Megatron design ranked from worst to best. No more! Grant me mercy, I beg of you! Now, like I mentioned at the start of the video, I have changed the order in each selected tier. Of the designs, I favour more in the row, so it's kind of like a ranking within a ranking. I guess some people could say that I've not been really following the tier list rules, but to me, it doesn't really matter. They're all equally as good, or as as bad as each other. That's why I've not changed anything in the second lowest tiers, because they're just all shit. I guess this is just more fun. As you can tell, my favourite design of all time is that War of Sabatron design, but like I said, I love animated, and I love that new studio series. Like, they're all my ideal versions of Megatron, the ones that truly live up to the name. We've gone through so many designs of this video, I don't know how I was able to do it, but I'm exhausted. Wait, I still function! Wanna bet? Start! And there we have it. Let me know which Megatron design is your personal favourite in the comments section below. And you can rank every Megatron design we've covered in this video on Tier List Maker. A link to that website will be in the description box below. You can become a channel member now and get early access to all these videos. Or you can support it on Patreon, where you'll also get early access. And this video was an old revision on my old tier list, so expect more revisions of other legacy characters. I'm dreading the Optimus Prime one. That's going to take a long time to make, but I'll get there eventually. So to keep all updated on that, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, and click that notification bell to get all updates instantly. Now for those who are wondering, I have moved the Transformers out of context slash funniest moments to a brand new channel. This is all due to YouTube's new policy changes, so I've just made a safe bet and just moved them all to a brand new channel. 
Trust me guys, I didn't want to do this. I wanted to keep them on my main channel, but sadly I just had no choice. And I didn't want them to stay deleted because I know how much you guys like the series, so expect re-uploads and brand new uploads as well. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, but I'm here now guys. We're making a comeback. More ranking videos. Expect a lot more to come. Tell me which Transformers character I should cover next. And until next time, this has been Common and Cam, and goodbye. For I am the rising darkness of which the prophecy speaks. Get out, Cybertron! Land of the Metal Moon!